All right, greetings and welcome to a day dedicated to accelerating your business transformation and unlo unlocking the power of cloud native technologies within your enterprise applications. Uh, today at Dev Nation Day, Modern App Dev, you'll have the unique opportunity to learn from Red Hat experts and practitioners, gain valuable insights into best practices, cutting edge technologies, and innovative architectures, all designed to propel your modern application development forward on the hybrid cloud with Red Hat OpenShift and Kubernetes. This event promises to be packed with information you can readily apply to your own projects, deep dive into learning tracks, all of which are led by industry leading experts covering a vast landscape of topics. Topics like AI, ML, app modernization, integration, serverless computing, security, event driven architecture, containers, application architecture, and much more. In addition to the learning tracks, you could take advantage of our interactive virtual labs where you can gain hands-on experience with Red Hat's leading technologies for building cloud native applications. This is your chance to experiment, explore, and solidify your understanding of key concepts through real world scenarios. So whether you're a seasoned developer or just starting your journey, Dev Nation Day Modern App Dev has something for everyone. Get ready to learn, connect, and unlock the full potential of modern application development. Stay tuned today and let's embark on this exciting journey together. I'm gonna introduce our next speaker, uh, Zineb, who is going to pre uh, pr uh, present connecting disparate systems in a lightweight way. Zineb, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thanks. Hello everyone. I'm so happy uh, to gather with you today for my talk. Uh, so today I'm going to speak about connecting disparate systems in a lightweight way. Um, so let me get to my slides. Uh, so uh, basically I'm going to speak about integration challenges when uh, we are having a system and that system needs to connect to different other systems. Um, and by connecting, I'm speaking more um, about the application developer challenges of connecting, like from an application point of view, because there are like lots of connectivity, uh, we have infrastructure, we have like a networking, but here is more about like application developer. So, uh, so I'm going to speak about like how to connect your application to other application or other resources uh, and also to um, like connecting in the way like um, what's inside, like for a certain feature, there is like certain data or sometimes content in the data. So this is why I like it's more a developer thing. So who am I? I'm Zineb Bandhiba. I work in at Red Hat uh, since 2020. I'm working on Apache Camel project, and who I am committer in PMC, and I work on integration uh, solutions based on Apache Camel. And uh, more precisely, I develop and maintain uh, several Quarkus extensions for Apache Camel. And I've been working for uh, a long time now. Before uh, joining Red Hat, I was uh, developing application and I was using uh, open source uh, to develop those applications, mostly in uh, in Java. So uh, before uh, building the open source solution to, to integration, I did myself had some uh, problems to solve in integration world. Uh, so today I want to give a talk like what I've about the challenges that I've seen uh, by the time I was working on um, big middleware uh, inside big companies uh, where we were uh, having microservices that needed to connect uh, to uh, lots of other uh, systems. And uh, I want to show you how uh, the open source project that I work with Apache Camel can resolve those challenges. So in order, so the first big challenge is to connect my system to those other disparate systems. 
in order to give you a better understanding of the, the problem, I designed that uh, small scenario that is a bit some of the challenges that I've already seen, uh, but just like to give you um, an idea of what I'm speaking about. So um, you just like suppose that uh, this is my system, that we have like uh, lots of microservices that here I, I describe by service one, service two, et cetera. And some of the more microservices have their databases. Uh, we expose a REST API for the rest of the world, and we use Kafka uh, to get messages between our microservices, but also uh, in case we needed uh, to connect uh, with the rest of the world. So this is like you can suppose this is my team, this is our system. And one day, like we have some PMs that come and says, hey, we need to connect with another system. Uh, so integrate with that system. And when we start actually discussion with the, this other team uh, that uh, here I, I say they have an external system A, we see at the very beginning that they do seem to be like uh, the same architecture. So they have lots of microservices here so maybe it should be easier. But then when we start like digging, uh, we see that they use like complete other technologies. So they do have like uh, their messaging and databases in the cloud and they use GraphQL, not REST API. So at that point, if we need to integrate those two systems, like developers from one team or the other, we need to uh, understand one of the technologies of the other team so that we can do that exchanging data between the teams. And suppose in that uh, example that at this point, someone in my team is really interested into learning GraphQL and for one feature we can say, okay, let's do it. But more time comes, the more we have to connect to other systems. And picture this one. This one exists a lot in big companies, like those legacy systems. So we need to integrate for lots of services with uh, a legacy system. And that legacy system is a proprietary system. So basically, they cannot change their code. And that legacy system is old. It's not going to change, and it's going to stay there for years. And there are two ways of exchanging data. Either we already have some IDs that we know from this data and we want to get the, uh, the updated version and we're gonna use SOAP to get those messages. Either we will receive all the new data from that system that we need to perform some features in our middleware uh, from files, because this is the only way that legacy system can push data. And those files will come like only once a day, for example, via FTP. And so at this point, no one, for example, in my team is interested to do SOAP. And also we start to have like lots of technologies to learn uh, for a very small team. And also they say like FTP is going to be there like just for a few months because we will start to migrate to as Amazon S3. So at the beginning, the files, you will receive them for FTP, but just like you know, in a few months, we, you will receive them from S3. And then also like there's this receiving files like once or twice a day. It's not ideal in a world like where we need like information ASAP and we are in that big connectivity. So. They've been looking to their system in a way that we can get this data and you say, look, there is a database, SQL database, we can access to it from that proprietary system. And if we can like capture the data changes there so that we can have the information on the fly that is very important in order to do some operation in the cloud system, cloud world of today. 
And then we try to integrate more and more. We will need to send notifications, for example, with Slack or sending emails and etc. So, you know, like all those challenges that can have like a, a team that is kind of middleware in a big company and to have that exchanging data. Apache Camel can set you free because instead of like learning all those technologies from those external system, we can like use, learn only one uh, framework, which is Apache Camel. Because Apache Camel has like more than 350 connectors. Most of the connectors that you know, like all the technologies that we've seen here in my team and other teams, they already exist. Here for the database, what I want to introduce you, if you don't know, like there's a project like named uh, Divisium that can do capture data change. And we have also a connector for that. So you can actually connect to almost everything. And in case you have like some uh, system where you have like your own API or something, you can also create your own uh, camel component, like just for an advanced uh, system. Also, the interesting thing, this is my point of view um, regarding the experience that I had personally when we had to migrate, uh, do lots of big migration of uh, transformation of uh, information system is uh, think of it also of a unified way to do your connectivity between all the systems that you have inside your company or even with outside. Because the problems that I've seen personally when those companies get bigger and bigger and they did acquisition is that moment when we need like, for example, to transform one model to microservices. At some point after 10 years, we need to transform some, some system. If the connections were inside the database and there is like no way to show that it's an integration between systems, um, it's, it's, it's so complicated to have that bigger view of transformation of all it needs, of where data is, who connects to what, where those messages comes. So if you have like a unified, you can say like, let, let's use one framework everywhere and also be specific about uh, how those connectors that you're going to do will be uh, observed. You know, in Apache Camel, I don't have time to, to show this today, but you can have observability in everything. So you be consistent about all your connectors when you have like a big company uh, can, can help you better observe all those integration and also to have them visible in order to see this is all the connectivity that I have with one system. So if we want to start to move that system, we know which connection we have with whom we need to communicate and to change the way we communicate. So that is very important. One of the biggest challenges that I've seen when we like need to do those biggest transformations. So what is Apache Camel? So I said is an open source integration framework. Uh, it's part of the Apache Source Foundation and it's today the biggest open source integration community. It's a project that started in 2007. There is like lots of contributors and that project actually got bigger and evolved very well and offers, uh, you know, cloud native uh, environments. Uh, it um, implements most of the enterprise integration patterns that have been described in this book. This book actually have the, those best practices uh, of all those problematics that we see in integration. And today with the evolution and the cloud and having API everywhere, uh, we do have more and more integration, but those challenges of integrations regarding uh, the technology, they are always the same. So it's cool to have them because most of the time, what we see is that uh, people do reinvent the, the world. So Apache Camo, it's an integration uh, framework that can 
connect uh, data and exchange data from anything to anything. It has like lots of things and you use what you need. And I said that it, uh, it, the talk today is how to do it in a lightweight and also an easy way. So here we have like uh, the description of one integration with Apache Camel. This is what we call a Camel route. And uh, uh, it will uh, from will get you what is the source from where we uh, will get the data and two is what is the destination. So if we uh, put this uh, camel route in an application uh, using Apache Camel, it will uh, start a um, an integration that will keep uh, going into Amazon S3 here. Uh, sorry, I went very here with this bucket name. And every file that it will read, it will take the content and send it to this HTTP endpoint with this path. And here I I uh, I represent like there's a, uh, there's Java, um, there's a missing here a Kubernetes. I missed it while copy pasting, but uh, we have like uh, Java and Kubernetes in uh, environments, and this is uh, a Java way of writing the the uh, the DSL the Java DSL but just to let you know there is YAML there is Groovy there is XML so there's like lots of way to 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 do this and just like uh what a camel does is that uh these are the external resources and inside like there's going to be uh, a whole mechanism that will be handled by Camel in order to uh, send the message and reply to to uh, to the source, in case we need like to reply. And also, uh, it will um, it it will do under the hood. It will actually use the underlying APIs uh, to connect to those different uh, resources. And here, uh, if we go back to the example, I showed that we need to integrate with FTP for the legacy system. And at some point we need to, uh, to move to S3. Uh, so uh, for example, in our microservices, we can uh, create the data, put it to Kafka because we have Kafka and create an integration that will pick everything going from that Kafka to FTP. If at some point we need to move to Amazon S3, I just need to uh, change just one line in my code. So it will save you a lot of time to just rely on Apache Camel. And if you are interested uh, in uh, in showing getting to the code, it is open source. If you need to debug, you can debug because everything is open source. Uh, but yeah, you can actually reuse what is already there and uh, without reinventing the wool. And if you have like lots of integration, the moment you start knowing Apache Camel, it's very easy to uh, create the any other integration. The second challenge that we see all the time is the data transformation, because generally we get uh, data from a system uh, in their format and we need to transfer it to another system in the uh, format that is needed for the other system. And uh, the format can be uh, that we are com having complete uh, different ways of having data, but uh, we can also uh, have the same uh, the same technology of, of designing the data, but the schema can be sometimes different. So we have like lots of things. We have lots of camel data formats so we can marshal and uh, marshal. And it's very easy from uh, from the route. Uh, we can like translate uh, by using like um, information from the body or the headers of the exchange, or we can use a data type. Uh, we can we have some template based components. For example, here uh, we can use an XSLT uh, uh, model in order to transform some XML to another XML. And uh, we can use processor inside the route and and uh, and uh, create our 
our own code. Here we we get the body, we get the, the headers, and we do transformation with it. And we can simply use a bean, which is like outside we have the Java bean, and uh, we give it the bean at some point in the route, and it will change. With it will send the um, the body to that method. And the resulting information from the method will be the new body. Every step in the route, by the way, like every time we change the body, the resulting body will be the entry for the next step. And uh, also, it's a way easier to do the content enricher, meaning that like uh, we won't go from a system A to system B, but when we get the message from system A, we want to go to another resource C in order to enrich that message to send it to the, the, the system at the end. And the, the third challenge is, is the routing message. So we call them uh, camel route because camel will route a message from, uh, from one uh, uh, system to one or different systems. And we can have like here we we, we, we enter the uh, enterprise integration patterns. For example, here we have the content-based router, so we will route the message depending on information inside the message. So either the body itself, either the headers, and it would be when sent here, otherwise sent here. And uh, we have the message filter, meaning that we need to uh, process only the messages that will contain this. And uh, for the recipient list is a, is a nice example, like uh, you get one message and uh, send it to a different uh, receiver. Uh, the same message would be just like one line here, having all those receivers. Uh, you can load balance if you have like uh, camel, the same camel endpoints. Uh, you can say a load balance. And uh, this one is uh, the idempotent receiver. So it, it's not just that easy. It's a bit more advanced. You, you've got to see the, the, the documentation. But, and it's implemented in, in lots of um, technologies like databases, uh, catching system, Kafka, et cetera. It's a way of uh, making sure that in case the sender needs an ACK uh, and if there's a disconnection to get back that ACK, for example, to have a way to, to, to make sure that we don't process the, the same messages with the same information, for example, ID in, the, in, this, um, in this example, and to let Camel deal how uh, to to uh, to deal with that information and uh, to make sure to record those IDs and record if they were uh, used or not and and to to let Camel handle if we continue process or not. And there are lots of e EIPs. Uh, so just like uh, as a as an example, there's aggregator, splitter, and resequencer. So here I'm going to do a first demo. Um, so that demo, uh, I, I will show you how we can do uh, all of this with Apache Camel. Um, as I'm working in the Quarkus runtime, uh, I'm going to show you this for Quarkus and more on developer mode. For demo two, I can show you something like um, uh, at the end of demo two, I will show you something uh, a bit different. Uh, so for the the demo, I also, uh, you know, I've said like I have microservices and we just like connect with the rest of the world. But I will show you that we can do a REST API also with Camel, and that REST API would list a coffee order from a database, get one coffee order by ID, and add one coffee order, and that out one coffee order. It will have some some uh, some information so that it can translate and generate um, an S3 file just to to say, for example, it's the the receipt and uh, or the invoice, 
and and then it will also uh, send a telegram which will tell the de delivery uh, people like you need to deliver a coffee for XYZ. Um, so I'm going to go to my IntelliJ. So the application is, is already, um, maybe I can, I don't know if we see it, like let me know if, if it's okay, but I think it's okay. So this is the a, a Java application. It's in a Quarkus. So Quarkus, if you don't know it, is a Java runtime that is tailored for uh, cloud native and Kubernetes. It makes Java run uh, uh, faster, um, boot up faster on Kubernetes and have less memory. Um, so in order when so here actually I have the Camo Quarkus, for example, S3 or uh, REST. Um, I'm using the Quarkus PostgreSQL, uh, but you know, like see, I have a lot of dependencies on my Java application. And once I have like a, a single camel uh, component in my uh, application, all I can do is I extend a uh, route builder. And uh, when the application will start, uh, camel will go uh, check those and, uh, and start them. So here I have my REST API. Uh, just you know, I have a POST, a GET, and another GET. I've done some HTML very basic because I don't know, know how to do front end just to make it uh, easy. And uh, the code is here. And I have another route. And this one, I made it a, a bit different. Um, it uh, extends endpoint route builder. And instead of, uh, of writing it the way I, uh, I showed you, here it's kind of like um, a method, like it's in the Java way. So it's another way actually to, to write code. Uh, uh, but what you need to know is all those uh, different kinds, uh, I always use the Apache Camel plugin so that it helps me uh, when I want to uh, find the properties of a certain uh, components. And here I have some, um, no, here, so I use them really the, the, the Java way. So uh, I just get the configuration from uh, the application that properties file and it will put them here. And uh, I'm going to start this application in developer mode. And um, so with Maven. And um, I will let you. So here it's starting Postgres. It's very quick, uh, but it did. Um, you know, and here uh, there's all this uh, developer joy of Quarkus. So here I created my uh, my uh, my database, and I did not put any information of how to connect to database. So Quarkus, by using JDBC Postgres SQL, it gives me that dev services. So it started for me uh, um, a Docker image with PostgreSQL and it connect this with, uh, with, uh, with the, the Camel JPA. Um, and here I have my coffee order here uh, with JPA. I'm using JPA here with Camel. So here I have a named query to get all, but here I have like the information to, uh, to get an ID and everything. And just in the import.sql, I, I inserted three values with the, the ID uh, one, two, three. Uh, so now that the application is started and we see that uh, it started many routes for me, um, I can go to, uh, um, to the application here. It's in 8080. And if I uh, get all orders, I have one, two, three. If I uh, get an order by ID, for example, three, it would give me three. But the fourth one, I don't have it. So those the, the the three ones. I am gonna go uh, very quickly on the code, but you can see it. Uh, I can give the link at the end. 
so when I did my um, my rest routes, I posted to a direct. So I did not want to get all the information messages here, all the, the camel code here. Uh, so I put this direct is like an endpoint in camel that will get the code outside the, 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 main, uh, the main route. So uh, if I go here to operation, when I want to add, add an order, I just say to, uh, I use JPA and I say, I am persisting coffee order. And it will go to coffee order and it will find it in the database and we just persist uh, that one. We don't need to, um, to do much, much code than that. And then I change the body of the message so that the, the person receives thank you for your order. And, uh, and here, if I uh, want to get all, I can use GPA and I use that named query find all that I have in my uh, GPA class that will, will fetch everything in database. And when I want to query with ID, instead of using two, I use two dynamic, meaning that I will give you an information that is dynamic. And I will uh, use here uh, the, co the JPA with a query. And my query will use that header, that ID. So that ID that I will put in the get will get here in the query. And that's basically how this works. Now, when I was here in the add order, I did here a uh, wiretap in order to uh, do something like outside my route and I do notify. For that notify, uh, I want to send to S3 and notify delivery. For sending S3, uh, here I am setting, I am getting that message, putting it in JSON because I want it in JSON in my file. So here what I said, it's just I marshal it to JSON because it's a Java object. When we have the coffee order, we use JPAs, it's a Java object. So I convert it here to JSON. And then here I add the, the, the key, which will uh, name my file. And here I, I get the information uh, about the bucket name and the, my credential. And to notify to Telegram, I just need whom's the chat ID, it's mine and the authorization token to use that uh, token that uh, I will create. So just to give you um, a quick, so this is only the code that we need, not much than that. Here is my uh, telegram, as you can see here, I just have a start, so no, no incoming messages. And this is my uh, bucket where I need to get my files in Amazon S3. So um, if I go back to my application and I add order, so here with, uh, I, I go check, uh, I, I here I just call with JavaScript, uh, some random API to get information about coffee. And uh, I use this information to, to, to submit it and it says, thank you for your order. Here I see the information, new coffee order for delivery. So I got this one. And uh, if I go here to my Amazon S3 bucket, I see that I have a new file. And just uh, to go back to this one, um, here when I get the uh, add order, I use a Java bean to generate orders. So I have an incoming uh, JSON that is not a coffee order. So here, if I go to this pin and, uh, and I have like, uh, it's a Java object that is coffee and I transform it to coffee order. So here I, I, I get just the blind name uh, and the ID as a coffee ID and the user ID here is just a demo. I do a random UEIDs. Uh, so if I go here, so here it was the blend name Red Cowboy. If I go to get all orders, I see that, uh, that new um, coffee and it's Red Cowboy. 
if I am the delivery person and I seen this four, so I can go to get order by ID and I put four and I get the red cowboy. So now I'm gonna add you some uh, other challenges. Um, so there's the login is one of the challenges. There are multiple ways. So here I'm gonna go a bit uh, faster. Uh, there's the, the 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 log AAP, but also the log uh, component, um, and they both actually give you uh, ways of logging. The difference will be how much like uh, further you want to go uh, with the customizing your uh, your your logs. So you need to check uh, the documentation to see one and the other and see what you want actually to, to use, uh, to use uh, better. And there's the error handling. Also here, there is like lots of ways of just uh, handling uh, an error. You can just do uh, on, on error and, and have this. But I, I wanted to show you this dead letter Q and, and uh, give you uh, the same demo, but with uh, dead letter Q. And uh, here, for example, it, it will be for all the class where I will have my routes. And uh, I will set a maximum uh, number of redelivery attempts. Uh, it's the dead letter channel and uh, the delay. And if uh, the, the, the redelivery are exhausted, it will go to a certain endpoint. And here comes my demo tool. So my demo tool, what I want to do is uh, I, I'm going to fake the delivery to Telegram. What I'm going to do is instead of giving my real authorization uh, to connect to Telegram, I, I will uh, give it a DEMB uh, authorization. So Telegram would say, I don't know which port you want to connect to. So it will fail uh, to deliver to Telegram. And just in order to show you uh, how it works, it will, uh, just for the demo, we will imagine that we, all those messages that are not delivered, we want to put them, for example, in a Kafka topic so that, uh, so that we can like uh, do them manually or figure out a system to, uh, to try them again when uh, once we are not, uh, what, what we can connect again to that service. So I will go back to the same uh, demo. And uh, here I will roll back just to add some uh, information in here. So here I am uh, getting that um, error handler here. And in the error queue, I will tell you know, like, um, if uh, you don't, so if we are exhausted here, here I get the order ID from the header. So I transform my body to just a simple text that says, uh, this is the order ID that you need to, uh, to process. And we will send it to a Kafka topic that is named error topic. And here it's not going to work because I will need here the uh, to add um, the Kama Quarkus Kafka, and again it will do the same thing. He will it will start for me a Kafka, and uh, as you see, I did not stop or, or start. So because I am in developer mode, so Quarkus will restart on the fly. And what is interesting is that when we are on developer mode, we have a dev UI. And we have something for uh, Apache Kafka. And here, for example, if I, I click on topics, I have zero topics. Because if I had like a, a camel consumer, if it consumes from a topic and that topic doesn't exist, it will create it. But here we will produce only in case we can fail to, uh, to, to get to Telegram. So at that point, because the topic does not exist, it will create this one. So here it started also for me um, 
a, a pod for for Apache uh, for a, for Kafka. But uh, for now, my code is still okay. We we can try we can try it out again. Uh, so here, you know, like it refreshed my database because it was just a Docker image. It's restarted, so uh, we started from from the beginning with only three coffee orders. So if I add an order here, I will fill this time. It's goodbye mug. Submit. If I go back to the order, I have the good my mug. Uh, here I received again number four. So if I go to my dev UI here and, and refresh, because it was delivered to Telegram, I don't have any topic here in Kafka. Uh, so now in order to fake it, I'm gonna go back here and look at my um at my authorization token here and instead of on using the one that i have in my properties here i will say random test i will go outside let it do the live reload so here we have a live reload just in order to make sure here i am going to clear the history here with my bot if I refresh here, uh, you know, the application started. We have another Docker pod, the uh, Docker image that started here. So I just have three. I'm going to add another. So this time is postmodern uh, Pi. So I'm going to submit this one, get back here. I have my, and as you can see here, I did not receive that one. So if I go to the error here, I have error happened sending notification to order four. So now that is interesting. We're gonna see if this has made it to my uh, dead channel queue. So here I have my error topic that we did not have. And if you can see here, I have order ID four. So uh, that's just one a way of handling errors. In Apache Camel, you have lots of ways. And uh, that one is interesting because I've seen uh, reinventing the wool around this one, but just, you know, if you use Apache Camel, you can do this mechanism, put the data in another channel so that you can process this uh, another time later with another mechanism. Uh, I want to show you something because uh, we created here uh, lots of um, lots of documents, and I want to show you something different than Java because I am a Java developer. Um, we have in Apache Camel uh, something that is named uh, Camlet, and I don't have, of course, the documentation here. Um, uh, so where is the the page. Uh, if I go very quickly, I think maybe here, Camlet catalog. So Camlet catalog is a, a way of uh, using simple source and syncs and put them together uh, without, you know, uh, having uh, the um, without like learning really the uh, Apache Camel uh, DSL. So um, here, for example, we can use the uh, Amazon S3 source in order to get everything from Apache Camel source. And all you can do is do a YAML file and, uh, and, uh, and you can use it like that. So at the beginning, it was really designed just for Kubernetes, but we made it work for, with Java. And I can even like show you this uh, on my machine. Uh, so I'm going to go here and show you here. I have uh, with Camel JBank is a is a tool that we have, and here I am going to use the Amazon uh, S3 source, the Camlet one that is available in our catalog. But you can you we can you can create your own uh, bits, but this one is available. And uh, I give it the properties and I use uh, a sync. Uh, so I, I put here in the readme uh, the way actually I generated the one with the credential. I don't want to uh, show you my credential. 
but I can use the CLI to run this one. And uh, when it will, because I did not give it the properties, it will read those files, they will disappear and it will lock. So because I have a source S3 and a sync log. Uh, so I just want to show you this, how it runs in my machine. And I will show you how it runs on Kubernetes is if everything uh, works okay. So I just uh, say target, and you can also run with that camel cli any any file. It can be Java, Groovy, uh, YAML DSL, XML DSL, or this uh, camlet uh, way of of doing. Um, lock that YAML. Hopefully, I did not. So here it will start, and here you know, see it read three files because I had three files in my Amazon S3. So I had the first one here, the second and the third. If I go back here, I don't have any message anymore. So I can, for example, I need to create another one, add an order here, fill with random, submit. And if I come back here, you know, I have three, I have the fourth one. Just uh, to show this one is mount, uh, no, it's regs Java. And here, blend name is regs Java. So this is the one. Now I'm going to stop this one because this one is just the, 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 the file that, you know, like if you want to deploy this on Kubernetes, which I, I want to do and I will show you, you can use this on your machine using a, a CLI that basically will uh, will use Java to, to run the Camlet. And you can even use a bit of Camlet uh, by using the Camlet component in your own code. If you have like a Camlet, design a Camlet that do lots of things and you just want to reuse it as is. So uh, hopefully I'm, I'm always connected to my, yeah, I am on the right uh, namespace. So here, what I'm gonna do, uh, so this file is just like here. I did take my file and I put the environment variable, but I don't want to show you what is in my target. But uh, and by the way, this code is on is is. I'm sorry for this readme that is inside the JBank, but it's just like to to show you how you can put your credential. So here I said kubectl apply, and it shows up here. Uh, let's see, I have another CLI that gives me uh, the camel. So it's the, uh, the camel CLI for Kubernetes. And if I log this one, for now, it will just see, actually it was just a file, but it started like a camel quarkus because the, 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 the operator we create actually the there's a, the camel k operator installed in my uh, kubernetes environment here is openshift i'm using by the way the developer sandbox so you that you can use for free um the red hat developer sandbox and uh, so here it is logging so i am going to go back to my uh to my uh, to here I will fill, uh, so this one is blueberry mug. I submit, hopefully it worked. And here, as you can see, it's blueberry mug. So this one was the same file and now it's running on my Kubernetes. So this is just to uh, show you a bit uh, of the, the latest uh, things that we have here that we don't even need to create uh, an application because it's the um, the installed operator that will transform it to uh, CamelK, that will transform it to uh, a Camel uh, Quarkus project. You just need to create your integration. You can do this also for what I've shown you before in the code, just the Java DSL, but you can use those uh, bits that are reusable, that exist and that are uh, and that you can use as source and sync uh just like that you know so that was like uh hopefully uh a cool um a, co a cool demo uh and it's actually uh the end of my talk 
uh, I will give you here a QR code. It's uh, where you can find the demo and, uh, and the code uh, for this. And uh, Greg, I don't know if I'm over time or if, or if I needed. Some... No, we've got a couple of minutes. Uh, I saw a couple of questions in the chat, if you have a second. Yes. Um, I'll go in no particular order. Um, one one uh, question was, can we change thread on which camel workflow should run or does it run on Quarkus main thread or event loop? Uh, I, uh, the thread, uh, I would say, I don't think so, but I, I think, uh, the best is to, um, to ask this question again in our Zulip chat. Uh, if you go to Apache Camel, you can see like the, the link to our Zulip chat. Uh, but yeah, I, I've, I've never tried it, so I'm not. I'm totally sure, but uh, if you can ask this uh, on the on the Camo Quarkus channel for for the our Zulip chat, it would be it would be great. All right, all right, and a couple more. Um, can Camlet be used without Docker Kubernetes as a standalone app? As a standalone app, uh, not really, but uh, what you can. You know, for example, I was like from Amazon S3, from uh, to FTP, you know, those are uh, com uh, components. There is one that is named Camlet. And you will need to create, you know, your your uh, Java Camel uh, code and, and you just like uh, use the Camlet component uh, and you uh, link it to the file uh, within the Camlet. I think this is this is how it works today, um, because the the CLI that I've uh, that I've shown you it's just like to to run uh, as a script. It's JBank, and uh, and the Kubernetes operator like creates an application. But in Java, you know you can you can use it, but you use it as a Camel component. So you need to to say from Camlet this and to Camel, uh, you know. This is like something like that. So you can you can you can reuse the Camlet in uh, basic Java Camel and, right. and and run it as a standalone. The, the 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 Camel Java knows how to run a Camlet. Okay, well I hope that answers most everyone's questions. There was a couple of other questions, but I I addressed them directly in the thread. We should be um, the recording should be available. Uh, sometime after today's event, but it might take a week or two for everything to get organized as this is a fairly large event. Uh, and so uh, you can usually find those on our Red Hat Developer YouTube channel uh, once they get posted. Um, and thank you everyone for your time. Thank you. And uh, don't hesitate to come and uh, speak with, uh, with the Camel community if you have any questions. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.